what's the best way to constrain fossil fuel use? Well, if I had my choice, it would be widespread public support for a rational uh, uh, approach to pricing carbon, and that would send a signal throughout the market, and that would work, because it would be high enough and strong enough and universal. And that would be my wish, but I don't think we're there. And working on this issue for three decades now, on emissions trading and carbon pricing, uh, and other policies, it's become clear we need a, to pull all the levers we can. So if we're interested in constraining fossil fuels, and we're only interested in that uh, because we need to reach our, uh, the well below two degrees target, and that is urgently needed, we need all the levers. So we need a full suite of policies, both on the demand side and, I think, probably on the supply side too. And we need nations to, to signal not just they are transitioning to cleaner, uh, carbon-free sources of power and energy, we also need to signal that we're not going to use all of the available lands that we have to produce these fossil fuels, and the leadership needs to come from those countries like the U.S. that are the leading fossil fuel producers and have already had the chance to develop based on fossil fuels. That can send the signal that markets will follow, that citizens and public opinion will follow as well. So sending this message across through the supply side as well as through the demand side, as we see coming through electric vehicles and solar energy, together can create the groundswell that, and help us get to this goal that has thus far seemed somewhat unreachable, seem quite reachable. That's my hope. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's not going to be just one tool that we can use, and I think that's really the the primary thing that uh, policymakers and decision makers and everybody engaged in, in combating climate change has to, has to recognize we have to stop looking for one policy or one mechanism and really take an integrated approach. Um, there's going to be different policies depending on the country, depending on what the political uh, barriers are they need to be overcome, uh, but it's, it's increasingly obvious that we have to integrate uh, supply constraints and supply mechanisms um, that uh, into our comprehensive plan. Uh, otherwise, we can't overcome the economic and the built infrastructure uh, and the political entrenchment that's blocking uh, many of the other most effective policies. OK, uh, let's depart from two facts. The first one is that uh, so far, the world has been unsuccessful in limiting uh, carbon dioxide emissions. In spite of the Kyoto Protocol, all policies implemented uh, under, uh, up to present, we didn't have a significant reduction in fossil fuels. That means that the world is leading towards an ecological disaster. So we need to change the policies. The way we are suggesting us is to include supply side policies. That means essentially several uh, uh, actions to reduce uh, the supply of, of fossil fuels. We are specifically proposing keeping fossil fuels underground. This is the idea. And we have different ways to do that. One is, uh, for example, a moratoria on uh, 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 carbon mining, particularly on in fossil fuel uh, exploration. We are thinking specifically on the cases on keeping fossil fuels of, 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 uh, in the ground in areas of high biodiversity. That means that we are going to have two very important benefits to the, to the world. First, an effective way to control climate change. And secondly, to preserve biodiversity. We are facing two very big global problems. First, climate change. Secondly, the loss of biodiversity, which is actually as, as important as the first one. So that's why it's important to keep fossil fuels underground in areas of high biodiversity. There's no single way of getting on top of the problem. Demand side policies, like putting a price on carbon emissions, will be crucial. Uh, governments will need to support innovation. But uh, supply side policies to constrain the supply of fossil fuels also have a role to play. And so uh, our particular area of work 
uh, is on coal and here we're looking at coal transitions and the question how major producers of coal uh, can manage that shift to a low carbon world which almost inevitably means that global coal use will be reduced and therefore production may export as well. Uh, and here the idea of a coal tax comes in, a fiscal policy instrument that can help dampen the demand for coal uh, and in fact ease the transition out of that most carbon intensive fuel in the main producing nations. I, th I think one of the best ways forward is to do something as simple as stop building new coal mines. Uh, the world agreed in Paris last year that it's going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, yet countries like my own, Australia, are planning massive expansions in the amount of coal that we want to dig up and sell. So there are many things we need to do. We, we need carbon pricing, we need investment in technology, but there's no scenario in which a world that's tackling climate change needs more coal mines. So I think an essential first step for any serious attempt to tackle climate change is a simple commitment to support a moratorium on building new coal mines.